Hello my friends, welcome to Kafiye and Reactions video channel. I am Mustafa from Turkey and today we are gonna watch Geography Now and Geography Now Netherlands. Today we are gonna learn something about Netherlands. Uh, my friend Kobe from Netherlands said that you can have hey guys. some surprising information about Netherlands and it can uh, be surprising for you. Okay, I'm so curious about this video. My subtitles are open because he can speak very fast <laughs> from time to time. I can't catch uh, all of his said. So my sub subtitles are open. Let's start. I'm about to learn something. So this is going to be a little awkward. Why? Because two years ago, my Dutch friend Vincent, who used to do the animations before I regrettably hired Ken. Wait. What? He what? came and visited here in LA, long story short, <laughs> I promised him he could be in the Netherlands episode, so we pre-shot some footage, and this was the intro we made. <laughs> okay. I flew over, this guy, a real Dutchman, say hi to Vincent, right here. Hey Vincent. Hi Vincent! Vincent, I know the Dutch are tall, but just step down from the box. <laughs> okay. okay. Just step down. You get off of your box then. <laughs> Good for me. I can never top those days. Oh, and this episode is on the Netherlands. Okay. It's time to learn geography now! Everybody, I'm your host Barbs. Now, there are many countries that deal with water issues. Some lack water, some have too much water, and yes. some like the Netherlands. I know that Netherlands is underwater level, right? Okay, I know that. And they have very inspiring uh, techniques to get rid of that. I know that, okay. Netherlands have bridled the wild stallion and have learned how to control the water and use it to their advantage. Yes. Water is probably the most powerful element in the Netherlands, and without it, they would be... I don't know, pretty useless. So what do you say, 2016 Vincent? And then now, politieke geografie. What? What? <laughs> and now, okay. So yeah, stop calling this place Holland. That's just one part of the country. You really? I didn't know that. I was thinking that why there is two names, Holland and Netherlands. And from time to time, I, I said Holland. Okay, so I should call Netherlands. Okay. Another country's national tourism website is called holland.com. You're not helping us here, Dutchies. Oh, okay. Hey, there's a town called The Hulk. First of all, the country is located in northwestern Europe along the North Sea, bordered yes. by Germany and Belgium. The country is divided into 12 provinces. Here's 2016 Vincent naming all of them for you. They are Limburg, North Holland, Zeiland, South Holland, Utrecht, Gelderland, Overijssel, Drenthe, Groningen, Friesland, North Holland, and the newest province, Flevoland. Almost all of Flevoland was reclaimed from the Zuiderzee in the 1950s. So besides being famous for making cheese and clogs, we also make our own land! The country kind of has two capitals. Amsterdam, the largest city and economic hub of the country, and home to the royal palace. And just to skip over, the third largest city, The Hague, acts as the second capital, which... So you have two capitals. I had no idea about The Hague. Hague. Wow holds the seat of government as well as the International Court of Justice. The second largest city though would be Rotterdam, which holds the busiest seaport yeah. in all of Europe. Yes. The busiest airport though is of course Amsterdam's Schiphol International, Europe's third busiest airport carrying nearly 70 million passengers annually. Really? Wow, Schiphol. I didn't know that too. Fully. Now we reach the overseas territories. Apart from the mainland European part, the country actually holds sovereignty over six other island entities in the Caribbean, remnants of the colonial past. These are collectively called the Dutch Caribbean. And here's where it gets a little confusing. Technically, the Netherlands is a country made up of four countries. You can have closer ties to us, remain just as you are in the Netherlands Antilles, autonomy as a constituent country within the Kingdom of the Netherlands, or you can opt for complete independence as a new nation and break away from us. One. We vote for autonomy as constituent countries. Me too. What the? We want closure ties and we'll settle for special municipality status. Really, Bonaire? You're one of us, the ABC Island. You're really gonna ditch us like that and leave us with this half Frenchy magoo? Yep, deal with it. And that's basically how it went down. So there you go. That's how you make a Netherlands. Waterways <laughs> dominate the country, though. There's even a town with no roads and only canals. But how did it end up this way? Somewhere around the 9th century, people were kind of fed up with all the flooding, and they invented these seawalls known as dikes, which yes. surrounded polders. Yes, I know this machine. I watched a documentary about these machines, these techniques, and that was crazy. That was crazy. I watched those that the documentary. It was so interesting. I love that documentary, and I love those men's creativity or reclaimed land plots protected by the dikes. To this day, the Netherlands has reclaimed about a fifth of its total landmass from the sea. So what would happen if all the dikes were destroyed and all the water just came and flooded everything? Scientists speculate that the country would go from looking like this to this. Whoa, wow. Amsterdam would be gone. Yep. Luckily, the Dutch are fantastic engineers and have been taming this dragon for centuries. And speaking of engineering, there are so many notable spots to check out in case you ever visit. So many museums. But 
Tyler's Museum, Steady Leak Museum, Museum of the Hug, and another one I can't read. And I know that uh, some of uh, people in Netherlands living in houses inside the rivers or water. They, they, their homes uh, swimming in the water. That's, that's very interesting for me. They are using these waters. <laughs> these people. Okay. They know how to live with water. The most notable one probably being the Rijksmuseum in Amsterdam, the Royal Palace, the Van Gogh Museum, the Anne Frank House, numerous castles like these. Ooh. Look at this one. This castle is looking like from fairy tales. Wow. And if there is some crocodiles in this water, it must be like fairy tale. <laughs> okay. What are these? Wow, beautiful. Numerous star-shaped fortress towns, so many amusement parks like these, the enclaves and exclaves of Beryl Nassau, we talked about this in the Belgium ah, episode, yes. the world's largest flower garden at I, Kuchenhof, yes, Austerlitz yes, yes, Pyramid, yes. this prehistoric burial site, and of course there are somewhere around 1,000 historic windmills left in the country from the 1800s, mostly in the Kinderdijk area, a UNESCO heritage site. Keep in mind though, the country has a ton of modern wind turbines that mm -hmm. help supply energy to the nation, a topic that will be discussed in... Greek philosopher Pythias visited in the 3rd century BC and he said about this place, more people have died in the struggle against water than in the struggle against men. The Netherlands is really unlike any other country in Europe because in order for them to even have physical land, a lot of work has to go into it. For one, the country is the lowest country in Europe, elevation wise. Over a quarter of the land and a fifth of the population lies below sea level and about half of the land lies less than a meter above sea level. The lowest point actually being here at Soitplas Polder and the highest point of the mainland European part of the country at a small hill called Falseberg, just over a thousand feet or wow. 320. Wow, really? This is the most high point. 1000. That's unbelievable. So, your country is like a flat. Wow, this is unbelievable. In Turkey, this, <laughs> this is impossible. Okay, it is too uh, mixed here. There are some flat areas, but generally, uh, very high points also two meters high however in the entire kingdom of the netherlands the highest point would actually be mount scenery a potentially active volcano on the island of saba in the okay. caribbean back to mainland europe though within this complex system of waterways and canals the famous rhine river that goes through all of europe and the longest in the country actually ends in rotterdam the largest body of water would be lake or bay yelsemir contained within the n302 and e22 highways in order to manage all the flooding in the south though the netherlands has undergone one of the largest engineering projects in modern history the delta works is a series of massive elevated levees that close off sea estuaries, preventing flooding. They even have backup levees in case one down the line bursts. In the north, though, the Walden Islands act as kind of like natural barriers against the sea. All this land reclamation has left many of the inland areas exposed to what are labeled as the largest open sand drifts in Europe. Keep in mind, they are not deserts, but rather strange, wet, sandy... Really? In Netherlands. In Netherlands, there are this kind of things. Wow. That's... Unexpected, <laughs> yes. And surprising. Plots in the middle of green shrubbery, a rare okay. natural sight to come across anywhere in the world. So in a nutshell, the entire country is basically one big river delta. Hmm, we should hang out sometime. Whew, so that's just about it for now. I gotta get my triple shot of espresso break, which means we need a guy who knows a few things. <laughs> Besides all the water chaos, the Netherlands is quite a powerful nation considering its size. They rank okay. in the top 20 largest world economies, usually around 17th or 16th place, and they rank somewhere in the top 5 to 10 largest exporters on yes. Earth. In fact, they have the oldest stock exchange in the world, dating back to 1602. Didn't that lead to like the whole tulip mania thing yeah. where people sold a single bulb for the price of like an entire ship? That was not the stock market, that was just a socioeconomic phenomenon and at its height sold for 10 times the annual wage of a skilled craftsman. Anyway, today, although they produce about 80% of the world's tulips and over half of the world's cut flower exports, their economy is mostly driven by the service and energy sectors. After the discovery of a natural gas field in 1959, the Dutch became a fuel powerhouse. The Shell company became the largest and most international- Shell is from Netherlands, really? Okay. I didn't know that Shell is from Netherlands. I was thinking that Shell is from Britain, or uh, Great Britain. 
internationally recognized Dutch company in the world. Besides the petroleum industry though, the Dutch are well known for their electronics and tech innovation. The company Philips invented the audio tape, which helped pioneer other formats like videotapes, CDs, DVDs, and Blu-rays. Yeah, the company was Dutch, but keep in mind it was invented in Hassel, Belgium. Oh, Belgium. <laughs> we love you, but... Don't try to f***ing take this from us. <laughs> Otherwise, the Dutch have made great strides towards environmental protection. It's not uncommon to find Animal Crossing bridges to allow wildlife to cross... Really beautiful. This is beautiful. ...over highways. Over 70 mammal species exist... I hope they are not falling down from those bridges. <laughs> Here, such as hares, hedgehogs, stoats, and deer. In addition, according to their government website, they produce over 65 billion euros in vegetable, fruit, flour, meat, and dairy products. Speaking of which, the modern orange colored carrot was originally bred orange here in the Netherlands to specifically honor the king. Since then, orange carrots are now kind of an international staple. And speaking of which, food! Some top notable dishes you guys, the Dutch geography peeps, suggested we mentioned include things like various types of stampots. Stampot. Stampot. Dutch pancakes with powdered sugar. Apple tart. Bitter ballin. Split pea soup. Rookwurst. Stroopwap. What? This is looking like sujuk in Turkey. Or uh, chorizo, chorizo from Spanish? Spain? Okay, this is looking like sujuk. In Turkey, we have this kind of cured meat. Very spicy. And uh, one of our favorites. It's especially breakfast. Worst, stroop waffles. So many potato dishes. Brined herring and smoked eel. Gin was invented here. Sorry, Brits. For breakfast, chocolate sprinkles on toast is common. And the pride and joy of the nation, howda cheese. Yep, that's how you pronounce it, guys. Oh, and keep Howda. It writes Goda. I would I would read it Gouda. I would read it Gouda. Pronounce it, guys. Oh, wow. and keep in mind, they used to be the largest beer exporters in the world. Heineken being their top brand until Mexico beat them in 2010. Oh, Heineken. Wow, cool. <laughs> it's also important to note that you will probably find lots of Indonesian and Surinamese dishes like satay or salted cod buns. A little cultural cue that hints towards the colonial past. Which brings us to. Okay. Thank you, Noah. Follow him on Instagram. Demography. I know there are lots of Turkish population in Netherlands also. Okay. Yep. Okay, that just happened. Now, in Europe, you have all different types of people that operate with all different customs and ideologies. Here, they have two sayings that kind of sum up how a lot of their country operates. Meten is weten and geselligheid kent geen tijd. How is that, Dutchies? Terrible? Good? Well, you're gonna get what I give. Anyway, the country has about 17.5 million people and is the most densely populated nation in Europe. About 77% of the population identifies as Dutch, to whatever extent that may mean, whereas 10% okay. are other Europeans, and the remainder are made up of other people groups, most... Yeah, <laughs> Turks, Indonesians. I know that there are lots of Indonesians in Netherlands also, okay. Moluccas, Surinamese, Americans. Play Turks, Indonesians, as well as the Surinamese, and surprisingly, even some Americans. They use the Euro as their currency, they use the Type-C and F plug outlets, and they drive on the right side of the road. Now, we all know that Dutch is the official language of the Netherlands. However, if you speak English, you should have no problem at all visiting. Netherlands has the highest proficiency in English out of any non-English official country in the world. Somewhere around 9 out of 10 Dutch people claim they can comfortably speak English, and around 94% of the country is in some way bilingual. Geography Anna told me a joke. Many times Sometimes Dutch kids will ask their parents, Hey mom. Yes, honey. Why do we have to learn English, but the British don't have to learn Dutch? Because our ancestors decided it would be a great idea to trade New York for Suriname and one small island in Indonesia. It's important to note, though, that there are two other regional languages accepted in Dutch society. They are Frisian, spoken in the northern Friesland region, and Frisian. the other being Papimiento, a Dutch Creole spoken in the ABC Islands. And it's already kind of well known that the Dutch are the tallest people on average in the world, men averaging around 6 foot 1 and women around 5 foot 7. And once again, here's 2016 Vincent explaining. Latest studies have shown that natural selection has been the biggest reason. Being tall equal to being more athletic okay like successful and healthy <laughs> many educated men start families after their studies fast forward a couple of years with length being very heritable and the result is a nation of giants yeah we're outbreeding short people mm. religion in the netherlands is interesting because historically they used to be predominantly christian mostly protestant but today about half the population identifies as unaffiliated which depending on who you ask could be anything from the largest unaffiliated group agnostics at about 34 percent to the growing number of eatists at around 28 percent which is kind of like a technical term for spiritual but not religious otherwise islam okay. at about 
about 5% of the population is mostly practiced by Turkish and Indonesian communities. Christianity, although not practiced regularly by most of the people, still plays a heavy cultural role in the Netherlands. Holidays like Christmas, Easter, Pentecost, and Ascension are still celebrated by everyone in a Dutch manner. At one point, they were a vast empire that spanned across every inhabited continent. Australia was at one point called New Holland, New Zealand, named after the Zeeland province. Ah, really? New Zealand, wow, now I understand it, really? New Zealand, come on. <laughs> Tasmania, named after this Dutch guy, New York was once called New Amsterdam, and so on. Otherwise, what is the Dutch way of doing things? Many of you guys, the Dutch geography peeps, have told me there's a Dutch saying, act normal, which is ironic considering that they are almost anything but normal. And here's random Hannah to explain culture stuff. <laughs> Historically, the Dutch have always kind of had a counter traditional mindset that shaped the way they developed as a nation. For one, they are one of the few remaining monarchies left in the world, okay. technically a unitary parliamentary constitutional monarchy that limits the royal powers. And the people generally like their king. He even has a holiday to himself, and the entire country wears the national color of orange. <laughs> of course, the country is known for being a frontrunner in passing what many in the world see as controversial laws. They were the first country to legalize same-sex marriage, they have regulated legal prostitution, euthanasia, yes. and they have a policy of tolerance toward recreational yes. soft drugs like marijuana. People People 18 years or older are allowed up to 5 grams on them, otherwise it's a misdemeanor. I have never tried it by the way. I, I'm not even smoking, so I've never tried uh, this kind of smoking things. Any uh, drugs. I've never tried them. I never interested them. And I'm not curious about them. But okay, let's continue. <laughs> They are world renowned for excelling in field hockey, speed skating, and volleyball teams. Sailing is... Okay. Sailing is of course... I love volleyball, by the way, yes. I love volleyball. It's one of their longest pastimes. They even have a huge festival once every five years called the Sailed Amsterdam Festival. For some reason, it's common for people to give birth in their own homes as opposed to a hospital. About one third of all babies are born this way. Uh, really? what about those clogged things? Ah, yes. Well, in the past, they actually served a very useful purpose. They were worn by farmers, fishermen, and artisans in the past to protect their feet from nails, fish hooks, and other sharp objects. Today, okay. they are mostly sold as souvenirs, and very few people actually wear them but they're pretty cool oh and hey anna what's up with all those spinny windmill thingy mabobbers ah uh, yes the iconic symbol of the netherlands yes. well many of these historic windmills were actually used to pump out excess water to reclaim the land that they now use for farming all before electricity and as for music the actually i got this one barb said i could have my own segment in the show now instead of just being a one-liner guy yeah that's right uh keith has been upgraded so yeah oh, well enjoy it well, that just happened. Again, <laughs> I guess everybody has superpowers now. Historically speaking, the Dutch contributed much to the Baroque period at the end of the Renaissance, with numerous composers, organ players, and vocalists rooted in Christianity. Traditional clog dancing was also a cool way to add percussion to folk music in rural areas. Today, however, even though there are many genres the Dutch enjoy, electronic music reigns supreme. Most of the best well-known DJs in the EDM scene across the world Tiesto. I know Tiesto. Are from the Netherlands. And the Amsterdam Dance Event, ADE, is the world's top and largest electronic music conference. So if you come out here, get ready to get shocked with some musical electricity. Thank you, Keith. And speaking of the development of the Netherlands over time, let's talk about history in the quickest way I can put it. Hamburg and Bronze Age cultures, Iron Age with Celt and Germanic groups, Gallic Wars, the Romans come in, Frankish kingdoms, Charlemagne, blah, blah, blah. Friesland once had a Viking ruler, Lotharingia, Holy Roman Empire, confusing Burgundian and Spanish Habsburg and city-states, the Spanish takeover, Dutch revolt, 80 years of war against Spain, this dude is a hero, golden age and stock market, Dutch East India Company, exploring years, Dutch empire, Napoleon drama, Belgium breaks away, Luxembourg breaks away, World War One, relatively neutral, World War Two, attacked by Germans, not neutral, decolonialism after the war, mining golden age, founding co-members of the European coal and steel community, which would later become the EU, government encourages over half a million people to move out, Euro adopted, and here we are today. Some notable people you guys, the Dutch geography people suggest we mention might include people like William of Orange, the first king, Michael de Ruyter, possibly the most famous painters, Vincent van Gogh and Rembrandt, Anthony van Llewellyn-Hook, Willem Berendt, Abel Tasman, Anne Frank, Max Verstappen, Glenis Grace, Dick Bru- Glenis Grace, she's uh, Kobe's one of the favorites. Okay, I, I watched some of her performances and Glenis Grace, she's amazing. Bruna, these soccer players- Robin van Persie. He played in Turkey in my team, Fenerbahce. We love him, okay? 
skaters, these skaters, and of course the royal family. And of course there's so many others I could have mentioned. Of course I butchered all the pronunciations. <laughs> but we're really running out of time and we gotta finish this marathon. So without further ado, let's see who the Netherlands hangs out with. Now, there's a reason why it's called going Dutch when paying for a meal. The Netherlands likes to share. Systematic and mathematically equivalent to what is owed to each based on the merit they've earned. First of all, pretty much all the former colonies have some kind of amicable relation to the Netherlands. The Afrikaans language in South Africa is basically just an Africanized version of Dutch. Tons of Surinamese and Indonesians have been migrating to the Netherlands for decades. Otherwise, the USA and Canada are very close friends as well. During World War II, the royal family actually took refuge in Canada, and Canada okay. actually quickly changed the law in which the hospital was temporarily considered extra territorial so that the princess could be born Dutch. To this day, the Netherlands sends tons of flowers every year in gratitude. For the US, the two go way back all the way to New Amsterdam before it was New York. The Dutch have immigrated to the US for centuries. Five American presidents have been of Dutch descent. They are each other's third largest direct foreign investors. They are both charter members of NATO since 1949. And overall, in most global affairs, the two usually work together as close allies. With Germany, it's like a funny love-hate relationship. Like the two share so much historically, both being under the same influence influences like the Western Roman Empire, the Franks, and even their first king, William of Orange, belonged to a German royal house. Then again, World War II was kind of like a jerk move, and the Dutch never really forgot about it. But yeah. nonetheless, they've moved on, and today things are fine. Germany is their largest trading partner, both in imports and exports. Many okay. Germans and Dutch cross over and visit, study, live, and have families with each other's countries. When it comes to their best friend, however, almost every single Dutch person I have talked to has said their little brother they love picking fun on and calling stupid, Belgium. Or at Belgium, okay specifically the northern Flanders region of Belgium where the Dutch speakers are. And many see the Flanders region as just an extension of the Dutch realm. The royal families love each other. King William Alexander even bestowed the Knight Grand Cross to King Philip and his wife. Flemish and Dutch people have been intermarrying and cooperating side by side since the beginning. And even after Belgium's independence, they've still clung on as the only two Dutch official speaking nations in Europe. And even then, Belgium is only half Dutch speaking, so they really can't afford to separate ties. In conclusion, the lowest nation in Europe with the tallest people on earth and with centuries of discovery in Invention, innovation, and tradition. It's no wonder why the Dutch say they keep their heads above water. Stay tuned, <laughs> New Zealand is coming up next. Okay. So once again, Vincent, thank you so much for being in this episode. Our favorite Dutchman, you have made your country proud. Dutch bars! <laughs> okay, my friends. Another very enjoyable video. I love this channel, Geography Now, and we watched Netherlands in this episode. Thank you for your suggestions, Kobe. Thank you, my friends, for watching it with me. It was lots of different information that i've never imagined before for example new zealand i had no idea before now i know why it is new zealand thank you for watching it with me have a nice day take care of yourself bye bye